All right. Hi. This is Ryan with Better Tattooing, and today we're going to be discussing tattoo mapping, but it's only an introduction. Rock and roll. Okay, now that that's over, mapping a tattoo. Um, we get this question a lot. It's not just, you know, tattooers who are like writing into the website or, you know, um, shooting us some emails because, you know, a friend of mine had recommended this or whatever. It's a more, more often than not, it's gonna be from the website, we get uh, contacts from tattoo clients who wanna know how to do this, how to approach the design. They wanna have more of a role in the design of their tattoo than perhaps they have in the past. I don't know what the reasons are for it, but this is this is what we're going to be covering today anyway so right this is like people are always talking about this i don't know why i haven't made a, a video about it before because i've taught this i mean hours and hours and hours and hours and hours worth of lectures at different shops just basically going over how to put a t t tattoo design on the body right um i started to do this before and it kind of got off tracks so we're just starting over you know anyways i'm grounded now <laughs> um what is mapping a tattoo Tattoo mapping is, this is how we come up with a custom tattoo, at least in my world, right? A custom tattoo is a design that is fit to the individual's body. And um, it, it, this is just, creates a custom. And we should probably put like brackets over that tattoo. Um, people are going to be like, a custom tattoo is what I do. Like I just, like I do a drawing and I put it on someone that, that artwork is, no, that's custom artwork, right? A custom tattoo is artwork that's fit to that individual specifically, right? Um, I can't take and replicate a Japanese bodysuit that's worn by somebody, you know, over here and put it on this person who, you know, is maybe six inches shorter, 40 pounds lighter. It, it doesn't work like that, right? Our bodies are different. <clears throat> we all live different lives and we all have just like, it's different. So you can take one design, you know, and place it on everyone, even though Flash has been done forever. I understand, but it's still not custom, right? That's just, anyways, semantics, just bite me. Um, I shouldn't tell the viewers to bite me, right? <laughs> Anyways, you're not even a viewer. You're a camera. I'm telling the camera to bite me. Don't take it personally. The camera's an asshole. Um, so if, if we're trying to create a custom tattoo, we have to understand the individual that we're working with, right? So the first way to get into like a good habit of, of designing a tattoo and mapping it to the individuals, we have to get a history of them, right? So the history is going to include health, so this is a health survey, right? Are you generally healthy? Do you have, you know, diabetes, blood clots? If you had a surgery in the past, you know, six months to a year, uh, are you currently pregnant, nursing, lactating? Um, are you planning on getting this while you're on your cycle? Like, um, ladies out there, if you're planning on getting a cycle, like a tattoo when you're on your cycle, it can mess up the tattoo and it's way more painful. But we'll make a video about that later. I'm gonna have to get into it now because it's a little weird. Because um, we're talking about mapping. Uh, so yeah, we need to get a health screen. Um, this is gonna be, kind of like rule one, right? Health screen is gonna like their age. This is the general information about them because you know, if somebody's 80 years old versus 20 years old, we have to approach the design, you know, different. <laughs> you just can't do the same. Anyways, um, you get it, right? A health screen. Uh, next thing we have to do is a visual inspection. <sighs> inspection of the person, right? To make sure that like we understand, especially where the tattoo is gonna be done. If this is a small scale tattoo, you're gonna try to like look, let's say it's script on the forum. You're gonna look at where the script is gonna go, where they want it to go. And you're gonna look around it, right? Is there additional tattoo work? Do they have uh, skin conditions, maybe eczema, rosacea, uh, psoriasis, things like this. Is there, is there you know, skin and general health? Is it unhealthy, you know? Uh, that can all come from the health screen as well. These are gonna work in conjunction with each other. Because if someone is unhealthy, but their skin looks relatively good, it can be deceiving, right? You're, you have to know about the person that you're working with before you look at their body. Because you're gonna keep all that stuff and kind of build that, that structure to how to judge what they look like. And you can ask more questions when you get to, anyways. Um, we're also gonna be looking at skin tone, complexion, undertones, things like that, um, because those are all gonna influence how we see the tattoo, right? Uh, when we look at a tattoo, we're looking at it through someone's natural skin coloration. And if they're very dark toned skin, the, the tattoo is gonna look different, or you have to approach it different, or you may have to place it different, maybe make it bigger or bolder, than you would with somebody who is like literally this white, which, you know, it, anyways. 
<laughs> especially if you're planning for longevity. Like if you have darker toned skin, you absorb more light rays. Your tattoos tend to like last longer. I mean, like be clear longer. It's not like last, they're permanent. Um, but they're, they're, gonna, they're gonna hold up better through time than somebody who is very, very fair, right? Where like the UV radiation from an LED light may have an effect on the pigment. That, that is true, by the way. Um, anyways, so we'll get through the history thing. We're gonna have a health screen visual inspection, and then we have to do a bit of a psych check, right? Um, and this is because if you haven't worked with a person before, you gotta check and see if they have tattoos or they've had bad experiences, right? You wanna figure out what you can do. This is part of the mapping thing, trust me. What you can do to make their experience better. Uh, if you're coming at this, Let's say we don't know what the tattoo, we know what it is, we know where it's gonna be, blah, blah, blah. But you haven't really checked in with that person's like emotional state where they're coming into this. You don't know what you're going to be doing or what you're walking into. Like I, I try to bring as much respect to each one of the tattoos as I can when I'm doing them or even when we're doing like the artwork creation. But at the same time, <clears throat> I have to bring the right energy into it. If I'm doing a memorial tattoo, for someone, I don't want to come in double gunning them and just being like, hey, everything is awesome. Especially if they just lost the person like a week ago. Their energy is going to be different, right? So I want to make sure I meet it at that point. As well as like, if somebody has just lost someone, right? There's been an accident or something like that. Their body is going to be reacting differently. So even if a health screen, a visual inspection is not, you know, it's showing you that everything should be fine. The stress levels in their body may be off the chart, right? The cortisol levels are up. It's gonna affect their healing. It's gonna affect their immunological responses, which means the tattoo is gonna probably heal out as well. Or maybe they're not gonna have the time to take care of it. Or maybe it'll heal out great, who knows? But it's good to know all this stuff because then you're getting to know the person and then you can start the process of trying to define the design, right? So we have our history. We're gonna do all this stuff. The next one we're gonna do is we're gonna define the design. Oh, uh, location. Sorry. Oh, location. I drank some milk and I'm apologizing. I, I seem to be burping a lot in all these videos. I'm sorry. I'm just a fucking pig. Um, anyways, so we're going to define the design location. What does that mean? We want to figure out where the design is going, right? Um, and this is really where, this is pre, we'll just do this. This is pre, right? If you want to take a screenshot or fucking whatever, I'm, this is just, this is what we're gonna do before we get into the actual like process of gathering like other things to do the artwork anyways. Um, the design location is gonna be wherever, like if this is gonna be a sleeve, you're gonna figure out scale, right? Small, medium, large, extra large, or insane. Um, <laughs> time commitment wise, it's not really insane. It's just like, oh wow, you want to tattoo your whole body? Rad, how long does it, you know, you think you're gonna have to get all this stuff? Done? Anyways, when we know the location, <laughs> And we know how they're going to be dealing with all this stuff because of assumptions that we're making. We're basically creating a hypothesis, right? Our hypothesis with this stuff, and we'll just do this, is going to be if X, we'll do this, then Y. If I do design X, then I'm expecting it to heal out as Y. So this is where we're going to be starting, right? The design location, simple logic. If it's a form, uh, a back, a chest, inside thigh, calf, those eight, uh, like, Areas on the body are going to experience stress as an environment much different than each other. Um, some are going to see sun all the time, like a forearm is going to be exposed far more than the inside thigh on someone. Uh, maybe. Um, but I mean, you can make the assumption, given the society at least that I live in. Um, you, you know, and at the same time, when you're doing this, this will also really lead into all of that information you got off here, if this is even going to be a good idea. So before you get into the design part, before you get into mapping, before you get into anything, you really got to define this location. If people aren't really sure, if you're a tattooer, recommend that they pick an A and a B spot, right? Um, before you get into doing any of the design, let them think about it. Um, let them go home and draw some shapes on themselves and see what may feel right or not, so that they can start getting involved. And that way as well, like you can kind of understand, right, that the person is gonna be committed to at least two places, and you can design the tattoo to maybe fit both of them, which there's some tricks to that stuff. That's usually like part four or five of this, but uh, we're just doing an intro, it's rock and roll. Um, so yeah, that's the defined design location. So I'm gonna erase this now. Um, we don't have to worry about creating a custom tattoo because that's literally what we're doing. All right. So now that we have our history and we have an idea of where we're going to be doing the tattoo, we're going to start getting into artwork, right? Um, but we have to get into it like the pre-design pre part, right? The pre-design on the tattoo 
is always going to be based on our understanding of like where the tattoo is going, the style, the theme, all the other stuff that the client wants, right? We're creating a checklist inside of our head and uh, you know, it's going to have, we'll just do this anyways. Style. Um, we'll do like a definition of longevity. Uh, which is a big one like we always should be trying to think about this like depending on the style output right if you're going to be somewhere between traditional Americana and like hyper realism they're going to have different shelf lives depending on the size of the tattoo when you're doing it right <clears throat> uh, style uh, find longevity we're going to be doing color or not uh, color black or white right um, and the, you know the simple questions we want to know we really want to know exactly what we're expecting to see when we're done right um, and then what it is. So, simple. Once we know all this stuff, what we're gonna do is just kind of set this aside, right? This is gonna be our checklist when we actually get into the artwork. Um, before we actually start creating anything, now we're gonna start doing the actual like mapping, mapping on the body, right? Um, given the location, which we should do this one again, we'll just put this on our location. Um, what we're gonna do is go back for a second visual on this, right? Because now we're like slowly building information so we can like keep refining our hypothesis before we do the tattoo. Um, our, our second visual, let me just do a second on that one. All right, second visual inspection. Um, this is gonna consist of looking at not the skin, Right, or the things they're going to be interacting with the tattoo insofar as the things that are just like on top of musculature and bones. But we're going to be trying to understand the underlying tissues, right? This is what we're looking at, muscles and bone interaction. So what are these? Action. Oh, geez, I can't multitask. Um, muscle and bone interaction, let's say uh, you have somebody who has extremely defined calves and they want to get a tattoo set higher up on the top of the calf, on top of like the gastro, uh, maybe not wrapping it around as far as the soleus muscle and they want it round. Okay, so you draw a circle on somebody and you have them stand on their tippy toes. How's that musculature actually going to be interacting with the design, right? Um, if somebody wants to get that same design they want on their forearm, how is their twisting and moving, you know, going to affect something when it's placed on them? And this is going to be, the visual inspection is going to be interactive. Like you're going to have to work with the person, touch them, right? Wash your hands, glove up, PPE, please. Like pretend that you're a surgeon, right? Get involved with this stuff, have them get involved and do it by some mirrors. So the client, I mean, if they're not going to do it at home by themselves, let them kind of get involved and see what you're looking at, right? Because that, that can help influence the design as well. Um, so yeah, we're going to see those things and we're going to take notes, right? We want to see notes on this stuff, please. Make sure that you keep that set aside, attach it to your, like, you know, your pre-list that you're going to be getting before the artwork. And that way you kind of can understand what's going on. Now, some things to think about with muscle and bone interaction, which I'm going to erase this now. <sighs> muscle and bone interaction. Let's add that up top here. Muscle and... <laughs> bone interaction. So what we're looking for is stresses, right? This is basically just like equals stress. Okay. Stress wars. Um, what we want to see is compressive stresses, right? If somebody flexes, their skin comes together, how that's going to affect the design, you know, that stretching, right? Any type of sheer rotational stresses. And we're going to define how they are on that individual. This is really like mapping, right? We're looking at this person individually versus the XY plane that we normally see on like a tablet or a piece of paper we're working. <sighs> These other stressors are going to, you know, we'll just say stressors is going to be fun. We'll just do that as number one. Number two, you kind of get it, right? Like if somebody's moving and walking and they want something to always look static so that anytime anyone takes a picture, it always looks exactly the same. You're gonna have to design that tattoo much different depending on where it's at. Then if somebody's like actually wants to have movement, wants to see it move with their muscles, right? Um, next one's gonna be topography. And I think the people skip this one a lot. Topography is changes in elevation, right? If I'm designing a sleeve and somebody's, you know, Pretty complex, maybe a single subject, you know, two or three, um, like alt things to focus on past that. I'm gonna look at like how their arm lays and I'm gonna look at the parts of the body that are the closest to the viewer, right? Um, on a shoulder, uh, people's shoulders are, and arms aren't like that, right? There's, there's topography to it. There's differences in elevation. As the arm moves and bends and shifts and does all this stuff, right? We've got 
tricep line going down to elbow, flexor sensors coming around here, shoulders high. So we have our high points, right? And then we have our low points inside of here, right? And if we're doing a design, especially if it's gonna be large scale, we're gonna be looking at putting, you know, focal points or things like this we want people to focus on, uh, on those. Especially if they're static, right? Like the outside of a thigh versus the inside is much different how you're placing these things. So looking for that topography for that person can really help enhance the design. If somebody has a very well-developed tricep muscle, maybe not so much a bicep, and maybe like very, very, very strong back shoulders, like rear deltoid muscles, you can utilize that to design, right? If we're doing a figure coming down, if the figure's shoulder is here and their arm is coming down, it's a focal point inside the design, it would sit way better there than dipping it down below that muscle and putting a background space based on top of that, right? Because our stereoscopic vision is gonna pick that spot that's closest to us, and it'll have to force kind of like 3D magic eye style to drop that back, no matter how much black you pump onto it, right? You're gonna notice that, especially if you're not looking at it straight on. So that topography is something you must take into account when you're getting into <laughs> getting a tattoo. Um, and this is where that, that, that drawing, this is the, the final bit kind of like for this intro, the mapping, is we're gonna take shapes and we're gonna place it on like wherever that person's getting their tattoo. If they just want something small in their forearm, we're gonna, you know, draw an oval. Have them go over to a mirror, move around, check it out. If they think it's great, awesome. If they're prepared for it, or if they're having to make a sacrifice because, well, I don't really want it there, that's maybe it's not gonna work, it doesn't matter. They're getting this before they get a tattoo, so they can have a chance to like think about it, right? Um, this is something that, it probably is going to take a lot more time than what most people are willing to put into in like a standard like street shop. So I mean like if you don't want to do this I understand. Um, but I do this with everyone. Um, when we do our tattoos about 30 maybe 40 percent depending on the time of year that we're working with people uh, that we go to do the tattoo. I'll do a mock-up maybe we'll do a stencil we'll do you know full sketching uh, maybe even shading and stuff on them and if they're not ready to get the tattoo the day of the tattoo I'll send them home with the design. They've already paid me for it, right? Like I, I charge for it at work. So they take it home and they'll wear, wear it for a day to however long the stencil or markers may last. I don't know how messy or they're, you know, active or whatever. Um, and then we get feedback, you know, without the prying eyes of a tattooer sitting there focusing on their every move and in a place where it's, they may not be comfortable. You know what I mean? Send them to a place they're comfortable, have them check with the people that they know, that they love, that they trust, and have them work out something and then give you feedback, right? That's gonna make it more cooperative. And that's, that's basically how mapping goes, right? We're taking a good history, we're trying to understand exactly what they want out of the design, and then we're looking at their body. And we're just taking our time to see how their tattoo idea or design is gonna work with that space. If we do that, you can create tattoos that fit the body. Now, we'll get into one more thing, because might as well, I'm already talking, so. Last thing, once you have all this stuff, maybe you've got some feedback, blah, 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 blah. You haven't actually created the design. Maybe you just have some sketches and shapes around the body. So we need to actually talk about that. Let's do this, creating a design. Let's be short, that's fine. Um, let's say that it's, let's just use a round shape, right? We know we're gonna be doing something that's round. Uh, it's gonna be going on a shoulder, right? Shoulder, we're gonna go outer. Um, it has no foreground, I'll do this, right, or background, so we know it's going to be like one of those sticker, old school, traditional type of tattoos, um, and the person is uh, medium toned, toned, tanned, uh, in July. Um, we'll say that, you know, southern, you know, uh, uh, southern tropical how's that or subtropical there we go subtropical subtropical climates um they're roughly i will say just make it easy 25 years old um they're not active not active they're a gamer how's that not active and i'm not saying the gamers are not active don't be stupid uh, this this person that we're making up that's not real isn't. <laughs> they want to get a tattoo of, uh, let's say, uh, it's old school, so let's just do this. Uh, so what, the bird. There we go. We'll do bird. Bird and rose. We don't know about the bird yet. We're still going to figure out. Maybe it's a swallow. Maybe it's a pigeon. Maybe it's a hawk. We don't know. We got to fit it into this design. 
So we've got some extra lines here. We're gonna say this is the outside head of the deltoid. And then we're gonna have contraction lines that we're gonna be putting on this thing before we actually get into the drawing, right? All right, so I know that was gonna be short, but evidently my camera stopped recording. So I, um, I kept talking for another five minutes. Anyway, so that pardon for the short interlude. Uh, <laughs> we'll get back into finishing this up now. Uh, yeah, burden rows. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a look at this person's like body, their, how they move, right? Draw a shape on their arm uh, on the outside. Uh, the shoulder and we're gonna be looking at flex and contraction points, right? So maybe moves their arm forward back up down and we just start making notes off that right if I know on the front side of this We're gonna have compression um, And I, I also put like marks on it right like two pluses and we'll do this one's three like this is heavily Like it's, it really compresses when somebody moves forward, right? Maybe they have a bit you know like a bulkier muscle mass something like this You can see a lot of movement on there uh, if they lift their arm up We're gonna be getting additional compression down here, right? So we've got a compression we'll do two it actually moves moves quite a bit. On the back side here, we're gonna be getting stretching laterally like when they move forward. Um, and we'll put a stretch mark on this, but I don't think for this person that we're doing that it's very much. We're just seeing a little bit of stretch. We'll have a single plus, and then maybe at the top of the arm, regardless of what they're doing, it's relatively neutral, right? So we know that this is what's gonna happen to their skin. Pretty simple. Um, because we've drawn it. We've seen how this is reacting. And even if their age is the way it is, we're gonna be trying to design that tattoo to last like another 50 years. So we have to think about these things, right? Uh, what can we do with this knowledge? One, we know when we're gonna have these high level of stress spots, which this would make sense, especially if this is, if this is the front, so this would be the left shoulder, right? I should have done that, left. The left shoulder. Um, that this spot is gonna have most compression because these are the spots, you know, as this person ages, they're gonna be more likely to lose muscle mass and probably like slim down, right? These are the spots you're gonna get crepe papery when you get around like 70, 80, 90 years old. And so this is where that skin is gonna lose a lot of that elasticity. So putting things with a lot of detail, you know, if we're thinking 20, 30, 40 years ahead on this part of the body or this part of like the shoulder where the tattoo is going, isn't probably gonna work very well, right? Um, if we wanted to put higher detail or maybe even the focal point we're going to be trying to focus where it's not going to be distorted a lot right so we'll be picking up that space that's a little bit more neutral we have the bird and the flower we'll probably put the flower maybe the leaves because like we don't want the leaves to be a focal point they shouldn't have a lot of detail those will probably sit the best around here right they're already organic having a little bit of movement isn't going to make your eyes think it's weird like if you do a wall <laughs> <laughs> this is a really bad example, but if you tattoo a wall on someone's shoulder, there's a spot where it's not gonna be moving a lot where the wall's gonna look great, right? Maybe it's a fence. And then you see these spots where you're gonna have this massive compression thing where if they move their arm forward, it kicks in a little bit, it's gonna look bad, right? So you're trying to avoid those static design aspects, maybe don't need organic movement uh, and putting them in those spaces. We're gonna try to find places where they're gonna fit better. So that's, that's basically it, right? Like, actually did that much more efficiently this time. I should uh, go over time uh, more often. Um, so yeah, when we're doing this, this is it. Well, rows down, bottom, middle, bird somewhere up at the top. I don't know what bird we'd come up with. Some leaves down the bottom. We don't have any type of foreground, no background. We don't have to worry about fire, smoke, shade, you know, whatever, smoky skulls, which would probably be pretty cool um, with this. Um, and then we do the design. So after we're done with that, we'll create our design. Uh, when it comes to sizing, we've already got all this, right? Because we've done these shapes, we've done these designs, whatever on the person. We have like a rough estimate of size we want this. When it comes time to tattoo day, because you already have it scaled, you have a full history of the person, you have an idea of what exactly the tattoo is gonna be done, all this other stuff, all this pre-planning before actually doing the tattoo. When it comes time to do the tattoo, it's paint by number. It makes it really efficient. Um, yeah, that, that's, that's the intro to this stuff. I mean, it's the, pretty much the, the 101 of how to approach, approach the design with a quick little example at the end there. Um, if you like this, let us know. I know I'm gonna be doing a couple more videos on this. I don't know how in depth I'm gonna get because I don't know how much people are actually gonna enjoy this or not, but we'll see. Um, and that's it. Um, like, subscribe, comment if you made it this far in the video. I know it's a long one. I mean, rock and roll, thank you for watching. Uh, and let us know how we're doing. Um, yeah, that's it. Tattoo mapping, introduction, done. This is Ryan from Better Tattooing, signing off.